to GalaxyCon Survival Guide. We are going to be your friendly hosts. Sorry, I forgot they told me I had to use the mic. Yes. <laughs> we'll get cozy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's get started. Introduce yourself. Hi. I'm Kiki from Galaxy Photography. I'm a cosplay photographer, and I love to cosplay too. Rubio today. <laughs> um, I don't know what else to say about myself, so I'll pass it on to Wendy. There we go. Hello everyone, my name is Fabricat Cosplay. Um, I'm from Southern Indiana and I've been cosplaying for about two, almost three years now. Um, I mostly do like anime characters, but yeah, I don't really know what else to say either. So there you go. <laughs> All right. And my name's Jen. I'm my cosplay name is Shadowbright Cosplay. I've been probably cosplaying for five or six years. But that was just because I didn't know cosplay had a name nor like a place where you could do it with people. So that was really awesome. Uh, so we wanted to kind of go over some helpful facts for navigating GalaxyCon. So as you guys have probably noticed, this is really freaking big con, right? Okay, there are vendors for like days, there's like 8 million guests, there's 12 different panel rooms, and like a viewing room, and an anime room, and like tabletop gaming. It can be really overwhelming. So we decided we'd put together a panel to kind of help people navigate this a little bit better so it's not just a like deer in headlights kind of moment because I don't know about you but that's how I get sometimes when there's so many people and so much stuff I just don't even know what to do why did it go I didn't tell it to go. <laughs> there we go okay all right oh okay so the first thing you want to do when you're prepping for a convention is to do some planning um, you'll want to check the website to find out um, all the times of the things that you want to hit, the things that are most important to you on each day, autograph times, photo op times, panel times, and make sure that you also note the locations of your events and different shows that you're going to. Um, if you're like me at all, I live my life in lists, especially <laughs> leading up to a convention, and so I will actually make myself um, a written list on my phone or handwritten of all the things that I definitely want to hit um, times and then usually the room numbers as well. Um, I also have a tendency to like looking at the maps of the convention center ahead of time so I can try to figure out where I need to be and how I can get there. You'll want to create a schedule for each day ahead of time, which is kind of what I was just talking about, and do include breaks for yourself. Include times for meals and time for you to get away from all the crowds, especially if you have a hard time with you know, claustrophobia or feeling overwhelmed in crowded spaces. And make sure that you're aware of the rules that the convention center has for uh, cosplay so that you're abiding by the things that they're asking and therefore you won't offend anyone or make anyone uncomfortable or uh, concern anyone with your fake weapons and other things. That's a super like big deal. Make sure you know if you're gonna come in cosplay or if you think you might come in cosplay, make sure you know the rules. Every convention is different. Here, it's actually pretty loose in terms of the things that you can bring. And if you have a weapon, there's always a prop check that you have to go through. So make sure that you're aware. Um, and anything you carry can be considered a weapon. I had someone ask to tag my antlers one time. So I'm not sure who I'm gonna kill with them. But <laughs> apparently they looked an awful lot like somebody so you could kill someone with. I don't know. Make sure you've got all your stuff together. That way you don't end up running into any kind of trouble. Budgets. How many of you are independently wealthy? Nobody. Right? <laughs> Me neither. Well, you will go broke if you have a plan. If you just got paid on Friday and the con is Friday, you're not going to have any money. By Monday, if you don't budget, budget the things that you want to buy, whatever your fandom is, know what you're going to have. If you're going to hire a cosplay photographer, budget that. A lot of photographers accept PayPal, so you can even pay after the con. Or depending on what your photographer's terms are, you, can, you that's a flexibility. Have food money separate, unless you really saw that t-shirt, that last t-shirt, or that last pickle rick oh my God. toy that you really <laughs> wanted to buy. But just make sure to always eat. That's important to use that for that. And prioritize. If you were came here just to buy a sword, Buy it, but then have them hold it for you so you can pick it up when you're done at the con so you don't have to take it all the way through, unless you're going to you know, pose with it. But think about that. A lot of people come to cons just for the merch and the stuff that they love to buy. So plan that out, especially if it's something big. They, the, the 
Mer um, the um, vendor will usually hold it for you and let you get it at the end of the con. Uh, one of the other things I would definitely pay attention to with the purchases is, particularly if you're here looking for like collectible pops or something like that, there's like probably 60 people upstairs that are selling pops. Not all of them are the same price. So if you're looking for one in particular, you may want to hit up two or three different areas and see if maybe somebody's selling it for cheaper, because a lot of times you can't find that if you look. Another thing with um, budgeting for conventions that I might suggest and something that I do personally is I'll only bring a certain amount of cash with me each day, and that's my allotted amount to use towards you know, different merch or whatever. And then when my cash is gone, I'm done for the day. I can't get anything else until the next day when I have a fresh set of cash. And that's just a good way to kind of rein myself in, I guess. Yeah, because no, nobody wants to come home to like a $1,000 credit card bill. Yes. So, <laughs> and it's way easier to keep track of how much money you're spending if you actually have it and you're not just swiping. All right, next, know your exits. This is super important to me because I have anxiety and sometimes I just cannot do people anymore. And every time I go to a convention, one of the first things I do is I try to figure out where all the entrances and exits are. It's not because I'm paranoid or anything like that. It's just honestly, those are helpful things to have because most people go through the main entrance and exit. I don't usually like standing in line. I don't know about y'all. So I'm gonna try to find a secondary entrance that probably has a much shorter line. Um, the other thing I do is immediately after checking in, I try to find some places where I can chill or go hang out. GalaxyCon is freaking fantastic for this because they have so much open space. Like upstairs, those concourses are huge. Um, so those are some kinds of areas that you can look for. The other thing some cons have, um, I know Cincinnati has started branching out into doing this, and I know a lot of other cons in the areas are looking into it. Um, if you have kids or if you, set, or if you yourself have autism or some kind of processing disorder or anything where it might get overwhelming, some places have a quiet room. Um, I know Cincinnati does for sure. Um, some of the other cons in the area are looking into getting that, but that's just an area where you can go and not be so stimulated. Not only are there people, but there's all kinds of noise, there are smells and stuff. Uh, it can just get really overwhelming. So make sure you know those exits before you get there and that will bring your anxiety down just a little bit. So another thing that you'll want to do is scout the area so that you're familiar with your surroundings. So if you do need to go somewhere to chill or if you need to get to your next panel at the last minute or you know anything else, you need to say you need to meet up with a friend um, who's having an emergency or something, it's just good to know the layout of the convention. Um, Maps are great for that, and also just actually walking around, um, walking to all the guest tables and around the event space so that you know exactly where everything is. Um, it's a good idea to at least locate like one set of bathrooms that you feel really comfortable with, water fountains and concession stands. Water fountains are great, um, very, very important to hydrate. Um, and then, as always, if you feel claustrophobic or uncomfortable in really thick crowds, try to stay on the edges or on the fringe um, so that you can rest and watch and recharge your phone. This con is great for that. Um, I found a spot earlier where I could sit and just drink water and rehydrate for a little while and charge my phone and nobody bothered me. It was perfectly quiet and it was great. So take advantage of those times when you can because conventions can get so overwhelming. Speaking of anxiety, if you start to feel tense or nervous or anxious or it's hard to breathe, plan that exit strategy. If you're with your girlfriends or you're with a bunch of friends, mm -hmm. have a code word, I got to go, I got to go to the bathroom, I got to go part of my nose, like whatever you need to do, and they'll help you. Even just to find, if you know where your exit is, that's just fresh air's right on the other side of that door. So know that, and because cosplay conventions or conventions there's a lot of people there's a lot of hormones rampant um, if you are feeling insecure or nervous or someone is is making you feel nervous or uncomfortable there's plenty of friends among us to say something um, especially if you're with a group say something to say hey, what time is dinner because <laughs> I got to go I got to go right now yeah let's hungry let's go eat <laughs> It's easy as that, and that'll be enough. It's like, oh, there's somebody, yeah, there's somebody. So if anyone's making you feel uncomfortable, find your friend, talk to any of the security, any of the staff, the volunteers, 
people standing, all the security guards that actually have been trained to, to, to find some, a woman in distress or distressful looking people and to assist them right away. So this is probably the most important slide I'm going to talk to you about today. So I'm going to say it a little bit louder for the people in the back. If you feel your safety is being physically, sexually, or emotionally threatened, go to the closest cosplay group and or event info station. In case you are unaware of where those are, upstairs, if you're in the main area, uh, the main uh, vendor area, on the left hand side towards the wall, there are a bunch of cosplay groups. There is also Cosplay Corner directly on the other side. Nobody, don't talk to me about that computer. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Um, nobody is allowed to make you feel like you're in a bad position. And no one is allowed to touch you without your consent. This includes for photos. Just because you're dressed up, or even if you're not, doesn't mean people have the right to come up and touch you or um, in some way make you feel uncomfortable. And I think anybody that's been cosplaying for more than like 30 seconds has had this happen to them. It, you get in a situation where someone makes you really uncomfortable and you have no idea how to get out of it. So one of the things that you can do is you can run to somebody for sanctuary. Um, one of the reasons that I suggest cosplay groups is they usually have four or five people running their booth. So that's enough people to have one person around the booth, one person to take care of you, one person to send for security, and another person to follow whoever was harassing you. So, right? So that's five. <laughs> so those are the kinds of things that you want to kind of look out for. And unfortunately, this is something that we have to talk about and we really need to take seriously because this is a convention and we do have people um, that are not stellar citizens, let's put it that way. Um, and you have that in any group of people that you have. But please do make sure that if you feel uncomfortable or you feel like someone's coming on really strong, come find somebody. If I have a booth at an event, you can always come to me. I'm more than happy to tell somebody to hit the bricks um, and to kind of help you get out of that situation. But most importantly, remember that we've got your back. There are people here that will look out for you whether you want them to or not. And you might encounter someone who you know, gives you a funky look as you're walking by. If you look like you might be in distress, just smile and let them know you're okay. Because, I mean, we do kind of keep an eye on each other. Because stuff can happen. And we want to make sure that everybody's safe and happy and enjoys their experience. Alright. Okay. So this is actually a topic that I am pretty passionate about. Because I myself um, have a hard time doing this. <laughs> um, but you have to eat and drink when you're at conventions. Um, you need to do it at least two times a day. And you need to have snacks with you um, to have in between some... Good options are hard-boiled eggs, Greek yogurt, almonds, peanut butter, beef jerky, high-fiber cereal. Um, I'm partial to like Cliff Bars, and I also really like having gummies on me because um, I know people that get low blood sugar and stuff like that will help get that up faster. Um, I myself have a tendency to faint if I don't eat or drink enough, um, so it's really important um, for you to take care of your body. I know it's exciting and it's really easy to get distracted and to not keep up with your timetables um, and keep up with what's going on with your body, but you need to um, drink lots of water. Um, it gets really hot, we get sweaty in our cosplays, um, and we dehydrate really quickly at things like this. So please drink water. Um, that's why I was like so ecstatic about the water fountains thing. Use the water fountains, it's free. <laughs> um, but yes, do drink water. Um, you can also try uh, meal replacement shakes with high protein. Um, Boost is good. I also really like the, uh, it's like instant breakfast or something oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, the carnation ones. Those are great too. Um, if I go on a trip away, I'll take those with me and keep them in the mini fridge in the hotel room. So I can just have one in the morning or on a break. Um, and then Gatorade is great too or anything that will help replace electrolytes in your body. Check in with yourself. Uh, the con days can go by so fast. You get there, you park, you rush. Took two hours to get in, but and before you know it, oh, it's lunchtime. We don't have time to eat lunch. I gotta go to this, get in this line and do this. Check in with yourself. Listen to your body. If your feet are barking, feet want to rest. And there's nothing wrong. Sit down, rest your feet, take your shoe off, stretch your toes if you need to. I learned a really good trick. If you take these two, to well, actually these three toes, right, 
and somehow tape them together, it, re, it realigns the electricity and the nerves in there and you have less of a pain. It's amazing, it really works, so try it. Uh, go to the bathroom, you know, if, if you realize you have to be somewhere and, and in line for two hours, please hit the bathroom before that. There's nothing wrong of you having almost a pee accident in front of your favorite celebrity because you can't pull it <laughs> to go. <laughs> Drink lots of water, take a break, call your mom, text, mm -hmm. this is when you upload all your Facebook pictures to Facebook. But just take a few minutes, find the plug, charge your phone, recharge yourself, get some water. Take care of you and your friends. Most definitely your friends. I'm much better at listening to my friends than I am to myself. Be, be the mom, be the con mom of your friend group. <laughs> uh, all right. So sleep. This is like one of those things we don't like to talk about at conventions because nobody does it. But like for real people, if you don't sleep, you will when you're dead. And that is not, I'm not even kidding. Like, you have got to take time to rest. Um, try to get some sleep ahead of the time. What I usually try to do is the week before the con, if I can, I try to go to bed early. Because I know I'm not going to be sleeping as much as I should during the con, so instead pre-game for that and try to kind of make it work out. Um, usually, not only the convention is busy, but there's like a gazillion after parties, there's meetups, there's house parties, there's group photos, all kinds of nonsense that you just had no idea was even available. Um, so check the website, social media accounts and stuff like that. So that way you have a better plan and you don't end up missing things because you're you know, in transit or whatever. But most importantly, sleep, okay? Because your brain doesn't function if it doesn't get sleep. And then you're gonna not enjoy yourself. And that's the entire reason we come to a con, is to have fun and be goofy. So make sure you get everything out of it. All right, logistics. Um, so make sure that you have everything that you need with you each day. Um, you're definitely gonna need your badge. Um, you'll need money and you should probably have your cell phone. Um, I like to carry my charger with me too so that I can recharge my phone as I go. And I usually charge it overnight while I'm sleeping so that the next morning for the con, it's at 100%. I did not do that today, and I greatly regret it. <laughs> um, so yes, please do that. Um, another thing that I like to do is I like to have paper copies of everything. So like tickets, tickets to photo ops. Um, if you're staying in a hotel, having your receipts and things. It's just always nice to have a hard copy in case something goes wrong with your digital one. Um, sew pockets into your cosplay. This is a great idea. Um, if you don't do that, carry a small backpack or a purse or some kind of bag that maybe matches your cosplay so that you have somewhere to store all of your things. Um, storage compartments are great too in your cosplays or props. Um, fans are also a good idea for really hot cosplays, really big cosplays. I personally have no experience with those, but I hear they can be very, very nice. Um, Oh yes, and if you wear gloves, cut a hole in the pointer finger so you can use your phone. That's like super important, guys. Like. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've actually gone to a few cons where I wear like a bodysuit or something and I can't use my phone and it is the biggest pain to try and like meet up with people or take a phone call or anything and like you need to have access to that so that if there's an emergency or something, you can use it properly. You can always like pull the tip and then cover it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or they do make some now um, with like, I think it's like moleskin yeah. or something, patches so that you can still use yeah, it. Yeah, so it'll still work. Yeah, they so there's things you can do. Yeah. Yeah. So you have options with that, but it's just important to be able to actually access your phone <laughs> as a resource. And that's something you don't usually think about until you're like, dang it, it's yeah. not working. <laughs> I'm gonna hit it harder, it's still not working. Handlers. Now, this is a weird word, but a lot of people don't know what a handler is. It's an important job. A handler is the extra person behind the giant robot working down the street. It's the friends, it's yes. the bodyguards, it's the husbands carrying the stuff, it's the, you know, everything. The handlers are important, especially if you have something that's like a big build. They make, and you can't see out, or even if you can't see out of your cosplay, they can help you. All right, don't turn right. Oh, you just hit a kid in the head. Oh, don't turn around. Your Godzilla tail is bumping into everything. Up the stairs, don't fall down. There's escalators. They can definitely help you. Handlers are very, very, I mean, they're usually our friends who we want to bring to the con anyway. I'm like, would yeah. you be my handler this weekend? Yay! Yay! Fantastic. So that's what they
they do. They carry your stuff, they carry your camera gear, and they also are a second pair of eyes, like, you look like you're about to pass out. Let's go sit down and so they can keep a second eye on you. Because sometimes your friends don't want to dress up. Your husband doesn't really want to dress up. He wants to come. Great, you're my handler. Congratulations. They are a lifesaver. And they can take pictures of you. Exactly. you can't. You need to have a hole in your finger. So take a picture. So handle a camera. But handlers are really important. Like, I, my husband's been handling me all day. These are not, like, super a problem in terms of, like, movement. But if I'm going in and out of booths upstairs, I'm constantly trying to not, like, knock everything off. So it's really important because I can't see these. I, I have no idea. So it's really important to have somebody there that can see the aspects of your costume that you can't or if you have a train or whatever. Yeah, I usually have a handler when I do Elizabeth Leoness just because one of my eyes is completely covered by my hair, so I can't see anything on the right side of my body, and like, I constantly am about to like turn into a person, yeah. or turn into a wall, or something else, and like, I have to have somebody walk on that side of me, and it's really yeah. helpful. It's important, man, that's why we got friends, enlist one. Um, an emergency kit, so there's a whole <laughs> lot of different groups that do emergency, um, cosplay, ER kinds of things. Uh, Cosplay United, Ohio River Valley Cosplayers, Cosplay for a Cause, and there's one more. I'll think on it. <laughs> I saw one other one here that I didn't know was gonna be here today. Um, most of them run cosplay ERs at all of the events that they officially attend. So check them out. Personally, in my backpack, I have um, electrical tape, duct tape, a sewing kit, zip ties, eyelash glue, scissors, super glue, and my newest favorite fix all the things, uh, high tensile um, strength fishing line. Because it's clear, you can tie it in knots around pretty much anything and nobody's going to see it. <laughs> um, the other thing you want to make sure you have is if you are wearing a character, make sure you have that makeup for that character. I don't know how many times I've left the house and left like the lip color that I put on at the house. And I'm halfway through the day and my lipstick is all gone. I'm like, sad. <laughs> um, make them wipes for exactly the same thing. Or if you happen to brush up against someone else who's cosplaying who maybe didn't seal their body paint, that way you can get it off of you. Always a good thing. Or when your friends kiss you and they say, well, then there's that. <laughs> I mean, um, a comfy change of clothes is super important too. Like, I, no matter what I'm wearing, even if it's comfy and I think I'm going to be fine all day, I bring a change of clothes because you don't know what's gonna happen. Um, plus, the weather outside is really iffy if y'all have looked at that, and pretty much everybody's walking here from some parking garage. So, I mean, those are some things you need to take into account. Um, the other thing I strongly suggest, just like Amanda said, is the power bank or an external power supply. Keep that with you, because if your phone dies, you could be of a really not so awesome group, um, depending on how you were trying to get home. I don't know about you, but I need to coordinate that with some people so that I can get where I need to be. Um, the other big thing that I suggest people bring in their emergency kits is aspirin, because there's this terrible thing called wig head. If you've worn a wig for more than like two hours, you've probably felt it. It's from where the little clips go behind your head and it creates a really bad tension headache. Um, if you take ibuprofen before you put your wig on, a lot of times it makes it a lot less terrible. You're still gonna have a headache. It's a wig. I don't know what else to say. I mean, that's how it goes. Even yeah. I recommend that's taking it, it before you get to the con, because standing in a two-hour line, you yeah. line the con, you get in, you're hurting. So having that aspirin in your system fails. Yes, very much so. Um, before we move on from this topic, too, one other thing that I suggest having with you is, like. You need some first aid things with you. Oh, Have some like band-aids at least or something like that on you. Um, if not for yourself, sometimes it's really helpful for another person at the con. So just something else to think about. Very true. Oh, okay. So at conventions, you're going to make tons of friends. So you're gonna meet up with old friends. You're gonna make new friends. It's one of the fun things about cons because there's so many people to meet. Um, Yes, it can be kind of intimidating and stressful sometimes, but there's no need for it to be that way. Um, the cosplay community is really open and inclusive, and most people are gonna be friendly toward you. Mm -hmm. um, bring some of your friends or make some at an event. There are tons of meetups here um, and outside of this convention, and they will provide a sense of comfort in this unfamiliar environment. And they'll also take better care of you than you probably would by yourself. 
So check out the event website and some of the local cosplay groups. Um, there are cosplay groups here. Um, they do photo meetups and different social events, group meals. Um, there are some like, there's some cosplay meetups that are hosted mm -hmm. by the con yeah. that are happening upstairs in the cosplay lounge. Those are great places to meet mm -hmm. people, um, take advantage of those. Um, but you can also get in touch with um, different groups via social media. Um, and then there are some like after parties around here. I personally don't know that much about those, but um, I know some are sanctioned by the con, right? Yeah. And some are outside groups. Yeah. There's a VIP party usually on sat Saturday night, right? Yeah, Saturday night. Um, that three day ticket holders usually <coughs> have. You can see that at pretty much any con. Um, anybody that's got a VIP ticket, they usually have VIP parties most nights. So those are things to keep in mind. Y'all got any questions, comments, and or stories? <coughs> Anything you're curious about? We are open one books. Comment. Yes. This is a legit comment. This is my I'm husband. I'm planning ahead of time for cosplay. Put your cosplay on. Figure out how you're going to use the restroom. And if you can affect it. <laughs> yeah. It's called bathroom <laughs> Act no one and out. act two. Oh, okay. So, funny story <laughs> <laughs> on this topic. So, as you can all see here, I have uh, red marks all down my shirt. Um, I'm telling everyone it's the blood of my enemies, but yes. it's it's actually from this tattoo on my arm because, <laughs> as a genius that I am, I realized that I was going to have to roll the shirt up to my neck in order to take the bodysuit off so I could go to the bathroom. So yes, that is very important. Because <laughs> yeah. otherwise, you've just got stuff everywhere. Yes. You're trying not to drop it on the really gross bathroom floor, and you're just like, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. The struggle is real. It really is. And but if you're a good seamstress, you can add snaps. <laughs> or zippers. That's a great zippers. idea. Yes. Yes. Velcro. 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 Yeah. yeah. And that sounds funny in the bathroom, but yeah. I mean, <laughs> Um, and if you order bodysuits from like most of the major uh, companies like Mitt Costumes, um, My Cosplay, stuff like that, most of them have an option. It's between $7 and $12, 90% of the time. You can get a male or a female zipper put into your bodysuit. I suggest that. Use that. That's totally worth the money. Yeah, the morph suits are really cool, but they're better with the next. Yeah. Suit. Yes. Definitely. Oh, yes. I have a... Uh, Speaking of morph suits, I dressed up as a female version of Leonardo from the TMNT series. I went to a Chicago con. I sewed all the belts and stuff, and I had the backpack on. And then I was like, I need to pee. And I'm like, boyfriend of I how many years, come over here. Help me unbuckle and untap because if I don't, I'm going to go on myself. So I'm trying to go undo everything. And I'm like, hold this. Now unzip me so I can go into the back. I always wear wear a shirt, like a tank top and shorts underneath just in case. Because exactly. not those morph suits are not. And fun. this reiterates the importance of having a handler. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> well, um, he was Deadpool and he was always off doing something. And I'm like, come back. <laughs> come back. That's a segue into hydration. So, I mean, you got to drink. Yeah. Stay healthy. Circle of blood. Yes. For real. Like, if you haven't peed and you've been at a con all day, go get a freaking glass of water, okay? Like, that's a freaking problem. Um, same thing. We, unfortunately, we had a couple of people have some medical emergencies last year here at this con in particular. They are very quick at getting you help um, to take care of whatever happens to be going on. But if you do start to feel dizzy or anything like that, or you feel like you may be having a medical emergency, let them know they've got people here just for that. Yeah, don't be ashamed of any medical no. It's not a big deal, and we would much rather you be safe than embarrassed, okay? Because, I mean, it, it's nothing to be embarrassed about. Nobody gets to pick physically what knocks them out and what doesn't. I mean, that, that's just luck of the draw. So make sure that you're aware of what's going on with you. Yeah? Maybe not a question, but it's something that you can do to increase your safety level is not only set up an ice uh, contacting your phone in case of emergency, but also have a card on you, you know, your wallet or something with your allergies or other issues in case you do go unconscious. Very smart. <laughs> yes. Yes. 
may, and you know, if you are a diabetic or something like that, you really should have a medical alert bracelet. Um, there's a lot of different conditions that you kind of really do need those for. Um, I work in the operating room and there is nothing more frustrating than to get somebody back there and find out that they have some allergies that we were totally unaware of. Um, and that sucks for them, that sucks for their treatment team, you know, it's just, it's a really miserable kind of situation. Anybody got any other questions? What's everybody's favorite thing about a con? Like, what is, you, what is the thing that you come here to do? Cosplay. <laughs> Shop. Shop. I like shopping, too. Yes. Learn things. Yes, very much the learning. That's one of the reasons I like panels, personally. Like, I have some skills. There's a lot of them I would like to improve. So, panels are awesome. Because <laughs> you can pick everybody's brain. And you can rest your feet. Yeah. Yeah. Nice cushy chairs. Right? Nice cushy chairs. Friendly faces. Air right? Air conditioning? I well, mean, uh, right now it's heating because it's well, kind of uh, Because the weather's outside. I don't want to think about the weather outside. I know, right? Let's, let's, let's pretend it doesn't exist. How many let's, people let's just thought it's like that? Right? It's so cold outside. It's really awesome. Well, I do have one more question. Mm -hmm. Have you ever gone to a convention planning one one cosplay and then come to find out the weather makes a turn for the worse and now you're either extremely too hot or extremely too cold because of said cosplay? Oh, girl. Yes. <laughs> so let me tell you, I, I took an Urza Scarlet cosplay to OhioCon this year in January. That was a poor decision because I was wearing flip-flops and it started snowing. <laughs> so yes, I walked in snow in flip-flops to the convention center. No. Never before have I regretted my life choices. <laughs> Quite so much. Yes. So the answer to that question is yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and I've definitely like changed on the fly too. Like I had already publicized that I was wearing a particular character and just been like, this is not happening. Like we're gonna have to switch. You know, and sometimes, unfortunately, the weather does that. We're really fortunate that here at uh, GalaxyCon, all of this is inside, which is awesome. But a lot of cons, that is not the case. So kind of do your research in that area, because you also don't want to be sweating alive if you're covered in body paint either. So, you know, kind of do some planning. Um, also, if you do have some kind of like wardrobe emergency, it's always great to have an extra shirt. Um, I unfortunately probably like the second time I cosplayed had like straight up catastrophic failure of a bandu uh, top so I had to buy a shirt at the nearest booth so I carry a shirt with me from now on <laughs> so learn from my mistake and have some help yes it is it's, it's like a learning process trial and error yeah and uh, what I always recommend to people who are nervous and they're not sure if they want to cosplay is because you know cons are always annual reoccurring when Franker Con is like twice a year. Yeah. But go to the con, don't dress up. Just just go and plan, attend, or the exits where, okay, well, I can park here, then I can go there, and then if I want to do the contest, I need yeah. to be here. Okay, I can do this, I can do this. Go and have fun the first year, and then the next year, rock it out. Yeah, that's always nice. So that way you kind of know what you're getting into. Um, I'm also a vendor sometimes, so not only <coughs> am I sometimes cosplaying at cons, but I'm also doing like the merchandising side. And a lot of that is just kind of, I always try to go before I buy a table or something at some place because you never know what it's going to be like. Same thing with cosplaying. Um, some cosplay events are more for, let's say, PG-13 kinds of things. Some things are definitely more G and we need to remember that and be respectful of the people that have brought all of their small kids to the convention on Kids Day. So please don't show up in a thong. And then there's Thanks. Dragon Con. <laughs> <laughs> But that's just a nice thing to kind of be considerate of your other con goers. Don't, and if somebody is turned away to like walk away from you, this is one of my pet peeves, unfortunately. I go to a lot of horror cons, people like to scare the shit out of me, <coughs> which is great and all, but I don't find it funny sometimes, okay? If I'm walking away from you intently, don't follow me. <laughs> like I have clowns follow me around because they figured out I'm afraid of them and they think it's real funny. I don't think it's real funny. So. Be aware, and don't let anybody make you feel uncomfortable. 
it's all fun and games until somebody gets hit with a frying pan. It really pan. is. Because, I mean, and it's not that I'm being malicious or anything, but, like, for real, they'll surprise me. Because just like everybody else, you go startle reflex, right? You ever hit somebody you didn't mean to? I've done it. I mean, just be aware. And I hope you guys have a fantastic Galaxy Con. This is actually one of my favorite cons. Yes. Yeah. Because <laughs> of all of the space and all of the stuff, and I'm never bored. I've never been yeah. to a con where I've ever had any downtime. Like, I can do stuff all the time if I want to. I have a secret. I have not been in the con all day. I, like, in the hall. I'm having so much fun, I don't even have to. I'm one of those that, like, paralyzes me crazy. So I just staying on the edges, I'm having so much fun. I can see the cosplayers come and go, I can walk, I have fresh air, I'm not crowded, the stairs are really cool, the cushioned little ottomans are everywhere. I could be content right on the outside. I don't have to go in the hot and the mess and everything. I probably will, maybe if I want to go shopping. <laughs> but yeah, you don't even have to go in that mess. It's great. It's awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for coming. Would you all mind if I took like a photo with my phone? Because I'm weird. Go yeah. for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a little thing on your phone called a whoops. Someone called a else is gonna have to take this. I have antlers. <laughs> if you got put put your phone on a timer setting, so oh, go, so it counts down. Get everybody to like come up to the front. That would be great. You guys are so sweet. Hey, they're not running away. <laughs>